Good afternoon, David Johnson here from the Back Pain and Functional Movement Training Centre. Um, pleasure to be here with you this afternoon and talking about lumbar disc um, anatomy, um, disc injury and of course pain that, associ that is associated with that and also the all-important mechanism to permit uh, comprehensive healing of the lumbar disc. So a lot of people will have heard uh, terms such as lumbar disc bulging or disc herniations or disc prolapses um, and uh, a lot of people will have had an MRI scan of their lumbar spine such as this one here and um, been given this information about their own lumbar spine anatomy and it's quite confusing um, to put it all together with all of these terms um, relating to the lumbar disc. So the objective of the talk today is to um, allow you to understand a little bit more about the anatomy of the lumbar disc and to put into context what um, is harmful to the disc and what is um, a normal part of disc ageing. Um, and what you need to do to really obtain uh, a preventative strategy so that this doesn't get hurt in the first place, or if it does get hurt, how to um, ensure that it heals very uh, quickly and optimally. So these are the terms that we refer to there, a disc herniation or a disc bulge. Um, uh, quite often you'll hear the term disc degeneration. Uh, and really they're all part of a, a, a spectrum of disc um, uh, and anatomical changes. And um, some of those anatomical changes are normal and some of those anatomical changes are pathological that uh, can end up causing pain and disability. Now, um, I was explaining this to a... Um, I was explaining a little bit about disc anatomy to a patient the other day and he was a, a manual labourer and he um, gave me the idea for this talk by remarking to me that, um, oh, Doc, it, it sounds like you're talking about uh, a chain wire fence. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, you know, the way you're talking about my disc, it sound, what I'm imagining is a chain wire fence. And he was sort of right on the money, and it's um, a very useful way to uh, conceptualise the uh, anatomy of the disc, and this is why because the disc is made up of two main uh, parts. One is called the annulus fibrosis and one is called the nucleus pulposus. The nucleus pulposus is this soft jelly-like substance in the centre of the disc and it's made up of um, like protein-rich and glucose-rich um, uh, matrix that has this ability to suck in water to create this jelly-like um, consistency of the, of the inner vertebral disc. Um, and the outside of the disc is made up of this very tough collagen, and collagen is just a very, uh, collagen is just a, a chain of uh, amino acids that forms a protein, and this is a very tough protein, and you can see these layers of, or rings of um, annulus or collagen that wraps around the soft central core of the disc. And this is what um, my patient meant by it sounds like you're talking about a chain wire fence, and, and that's really what this annulus is. Um, and this annulus fences in the, um, the softer, uh, rubbery part of the disc. And so clearly, just like any uh, fence, fencing structure, the integrity of that fence is very uh, important um, and it's no less important in your lumbar disc. We have to try to protect the health of this chain wire fence in, your, um, in, in every um, spinal disc that you have. And the disc, of course, lies between the bones. So there's, the, there's a bone of a vertebral body, there's another bone, and they all, they're all stacked up on top of each other, and in between the bones is the uh, intervertebral disc. 
Um, and what happens to that chain wire fence over time is natural aging. And with natural aging, the chain wire fence becomes a little bit floppy. Okay? So initially, when you're young and, and, um, uh, and the, uh, the, when you're young, the, the chain wire fence is nice and tight, as I showed you in that picture. But with aging, the chain wire fence gets a little bit floppy. You can sort of imagine it like a few of these posts have been taken away or a few of the posts have, have shrunk down a little bit. And so what that ends up doing is it creates this um, uh, buckling, floppy, uh, somewhat um, unstable fence or boundary. And that's what we can see uh, in the spine over time. So here's a, a disc, a cross section of a disc, and it's nice and um, tall, and there's no buckling or bulging off to the sides. Um, and as the disc ages, you can see the development of some bulging here uh, and some loss of disc height. Um, and there's also some deterioration and little disruptions to the annulus or some breakages in that chain wire fence. Uh, here's a schematic a diagram of a normal, nice, healthy looking disc and a degenerate disc. Okay. It's not exactly accurate to actually call this a disease because this is a natural process of the disc annulus getting older. And we know that getting older is not causative of pain and disability. It's very normal for all of our bodily systems to um, age and uh, degenerate, but experiencing pain and disability is not normal. So how do we distinguish between a disc that is aging normally and pain-free versus a disc that is aging uh, and becoming degenerate but also causing you to experience pain and disability. Well, there's a very um, important understanding that has to be uh, put into place um, to answer that question. When, when the disc ages and the chain wire fence buckles, it makes you, as, it, as it's shown here in this MRI scan, so this is a a degenerate disc and you can see a little bit of that buckling of the um, of the chain wire fence. Um, what that makes an individual susceptible to is instability or poor quality movement. Because that fence is no longer a nice tight fence, when you engage in your daily activities, whether they be very physically demanding activities, or whether they be simple, trivial tasks, such as getting out of a chair, bending over to put your socks on, brushing your teeth, picking up your mobile phone off the coffee table, you are more susceptible to poor movement as your disc chain wire fence becomes a little bit more floppy. Okay? And so what do we mean by poor movement? We mean instability. And you can see on this x-ray what instability could look like if you are actually x-raying someone while they are moving. And you can see that the disc, at uh, this section here, is not moving in a stable way. Um, what connotations does that have? Well, if a disc doesn't move in a stable way, well naturally we could impart some injury to that disc. And what does that mean in, in terms of our analogy with the chain wire fence? We basically break the chain wire fence in certain parts. And we can visualise that in patients on their MRI scans by showing little tears in their 
chain wire fence in their annulus, okay? So there's an MRI scan of a tear, or um, sometimes the, the the MRI report will refer to it as a high intensity zone because it's bright on this type of scanning. But in, in um, uh, anatomical terms, that's what a disruption to the chain wire fence will look like. And that makes you susceptible. Well, number one, it's very painful to tear these fibres, these collagen fibres, because they're very much innervated and, and densely uh, filled with pain uh, nerves that um, will transmit pain signals to the brain when they're stretched or torn. Um, you'll develop some inflammation in that annulus. Um, it, you, uh, you risk the uh, extrusion of the nucleus, the softer bit of the disc. You risk having that disc um, herniate through the, the disruption or the tear. And then, of course, you risk the development of um, neural compression, which will then cause not only the severe back spasms uh, and the back tightening sensation, you'll start to get sciatic pain too, which is the pain radiating down the lower limb. Uh, and that's all as a consequence of the um, uh, disruption to that uh, chain wire fence that we're talking about. Okay. Now, how can we minimise the likelihood of you damaging your chain wire fence? Well, it really does boil down to and filter simply down to the way you move your spine and the way you move the discs uh, located between the bones. And you are much more susceptible to unstable disc movement if you are not aware of and if you are not trained to move your spine in the correct way. And this is an example of two different movements. Um, one where the lumbar spine or the whole spine is put into like a non-neutral position or a Sydney Harbour Bridge position versus one where the spine is maintained in this neutral in this neutral position. Here's the diagrammatic of it in a non-neutral position, okay? And here's a diagrammatic of it in a neutral position. Um, and this is biomechanically uh, um, stressful and this is biomechanically efficient. And clearly, in a biomechanically stressful or susceptible position, you're at a much greater chance of developing what we refer to as axial or translational instability, where the bones tend to, instead of moving in a stable way, you're more likely to slip, slip forward on top of each other. And that's what we refer to as translation or sliding, and that's a very um, uh, uh, biomechanically stressful thing for the disc to deal with. And, uh, and often, if you don't have the capacity, you will get those um, chain wire fence tears or tears in the annulus fibrosis. And so um, we can minimise the risk of that happening by retraining your motor patterns, retraining the way you move your body so that even though you have some buckling of your chain wire fence with age, um, you're not likely to sustain an injury to that chain wire fence. Okay. Um, and also remember that even as a younger person, when the chain wire fence is nice and tight, if you repeatedly move poorly, um, even though you still have a fairly healthy chain wire fence, you can create advanced and accelerated um, disruption to the chain wire fence. So it's not restricted just to old people, older people getting um, uh, disc injuries. Young people can get the same disc injuries as old people if the bad movement is repetitive and accumulative and often if it's under greater load or physical demand. So say it's a young person doing a lot of sport or doing a lot of heavy work, then they too can 
disrupt their chain wire fence and experience a lot of back pain. Um, so if you sustain this type of injury to your chain wire fence, how do you recover from it? So first part is, number one, try to prevent the injury in the first place by understanding what good movement is all about and being taught what good movement is about, um, which is why functional movement therapy and the neurohab program is so critical to my spine surgery practice. But if you say you have sustained an injury and you're, you're wanting to recover from the injury, we need to heal we need to heal the chain wire fence, don't we? And that's analogous to us just getting in there and getting the old welding torch out and, and welding it welding it back together. But if you don't understand movement, that welding process can never consolidate. It can never comprehensively repair the damage. And it's a little bit like picking a scab. So you have an injury to your skin and the scab forms over time and eventually that scab will totally disappear and be replaced with scar tissue. That's your body's way of healing, it's scar tissue. So we can do the same thing to our lumbar disc as well. We can sustain an injury. If you do the right thing, you're going to develop some scar tissue in your disc and comprehensively heal that tear in the chain wire. But if you don't move well, if you don't understand how to move well and your rehabilitation has not focused on movement proficiency as the primary goal, then it's a little bit like picking the scab all the time. You're never going to heal. And this, this injury will linger for months and months and months and months and, and years. And it's not uncommon for patients to describe years and years of back pain, just never, ever recovering, even though they've been doing a lot of rehabilitation and a lot of rehabilitation that clearly has not focused on functional movement proficiency not teaching you the skill of moving and therefore you continue to move your spine poorly, you continue to move your disc poorly, lots of biomechanical stress and that's exactly the same as picking up the scab all the time so you never heal. And this can, this can never, your chain wire fence can never be fully uh, repaired. And that's why um, uh, that's why your rehabilitation must be movement therapy focused um, with that that is the primary foundational element if you want to do other things um, uh, alongside functional movement therapy then that's absolutely fine like you know core strengthening massage stretching hydrotherapy that's absolutely fine but if you do all of those things and you don't actually do have functional movement therapy as the centerpiece then there's a very high chance that you're going to continue to um, prevent or inhibit the, the healing process um, for the damage to your chain wire fence or your more anatomically correct term, your annulus fibrosis, okay? Um, and that will end up leading to persistence of pain, chronic pain, and a lot of other things that get layered on top of chronic pain. Okay, so uh, I hope that makes uh, sense to you using that analogy of the chain wire fence and I have one of my patients to thank for that uh, from this week. Um, and uh, if you're interested uh, to find out more about functional movement therapy or to talk to me about your back pain problems, please get in touch with us. Um, info at fmtc.com.au uh, or my uh, phone number here at uh, St Andrews Hospital, uh, 32559356. All the best. See you next time.